guys. Hey, Chantel. Hey, Chantel. All right. How are you guys? We're doing good. good. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Um, all right. So um, I want to know what inspired the creation of this show. Um, so the inspiration came from, you know, I met Pat while working at Sony Pictures Animation. Uh, we were both like story artists working there, uh, working on the Emoji movie. And uh, we really wa were lamenting like, oh, you know, we weren't working on anything that we were like super excited about. And we started talking about like, what would we want to do? Like, what what are the types of films like that we would want to make? And uh, Pat was like freaking me out because like he was like bringing it with his crazy knowledge of like movies. I'm like, it, movies from my generation. I'm, like, how do you know about like Brother from Another Planet? Obscure movies, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah, Pat. Yeah, I mean, we both were sci-fi heads and we both were like, okay, let's, instead of complaining about our station life, let's do something. Let's make something that we would want to work on that we like. And we both were sci-fi heads. We knew we wanted to do something in animation because we felt like that hadn't been, I guess, tapped in the way that we felt it could have been. We also wanted to do a show with like a black main cast in sci-fi because we felt like that wasn't, hadn't really been served enough. Um, even though it's it's there in sci-fi history, like John Carpenter films and stuff, stuff like that, like it's always it's it's part of it. But we wanted it to be like, no, we're going for it. Yeah. And it was also something where we wanted movies that I mean, we originally pitched it as a movie. That's why we're talking about movies. But it, we were more inspired by like E.T. and films of that era where it was like it was, very, it was very yeah goonies it was very real like the mom is like talking about like the dad not being in the picture like openly in the in, in a movie that's like for kids um and it was and it wasn't it doesn't bring the movie down it just makes it feel real it's like oh this yes. is like this is like my neighborhood attack the block was another one we talked about a lot where it's like seeing people you don't usually get to see go up against something extraterrestrial yeah. um so yeah, th those were some of the touchstones for us early on. Yeah, so I mean, that was my next question. I know that the show touches on a lot of um, difficult, but very honest and transparent topics. Um, but I wanna know, like over the years, you know, um, the representation of ethnicities and, and cultures and, and um, sexualities and genders, you know, it's become like a prominent topic in entertainment, um, specifically in Hollywood. But I wanna know, even though there has been some progress, do you guys feel like uh, there's like proper representation of okay. marginalized groups of people in, um, mm -hmm. in the animation industries? I mean, I feel like it's, it, I feel like it's getting better. Um, I definitely think, you know, um, it, you know, there's still some hurdles, you know, like to, to, in order to get like really authentic, like voices out there. I mean, there's still some gatekeeping that we have to get past. I think a lot of that, like you get past that by hiring more executives of color and hiring more, you know, um, representation, like from, you know, the the gay community in these executive roles, like in the development roles, so they can actually have a better perspective on like what, what these groups are trying to present and like how they're trying to present. There's a particular type of entertainment where like, well, you may not think that it's funny or interesting, but like it's not, you may not be the target audience, you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And these, I mean, you know, black show creators are out there. Like if you yes. work in animation, you know who those people are because we all know each other. We're like, oh yeah, that person's got an awesome thing, but mm -hmm. it's, you have to, somebody has to bet on those people and those people mm -hmm. aren't celebrities yet. Um, mm -hmm. Our, our writer's room was a lot of people like that who yeah. we pulled in um, Shakira Presley, Justin Gordon, who now has his own show actually at HBO. Um, those people like that to me, it's like betting on those people, mm -hmm. uh, even if they're not a big name, but they have a great idea um, and they come from animation. Like that's, I think I used, can try to address it. Okay. If you were a bounty hunter, what would be your bounty hunter name and what, or who would you be targeting? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you know what? Uh, this is this is cheating a little bit, but like, say Rob Rock was at would actually be my. I, I was like, that wow. was like my, that was like that was my, you know, fictional, you know, uh, bounty hunter name. And uh, I would actually, I actually would target uh, liquid based life forms because I think it'd be fun. Okay. Uh, I want to, you know what? If he's saying that, I want to be a liquid based. Uh, <laughs> I want to be. I want to be. 
<laughs> our production designer Yuki did a design of Blobby in like full armor. That's what I want to be. Uh, <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate you guys talking to me. Love the show. Um, can't wait, wait for everyone else to see it. Um, and, you know, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you, Chantel. Thank you.